Hi everybody, how are you? It's Dr. Emily from the Evidence-Based Fitness Academy. Welcome to my office. I wanted to do a short video where we speak about bunions and really answer, are bunions correctable without surgery? A lot of details involving bunions and the specifics related to bunions is probably the one, one of the most confusing and myth-oriented conditions that involve the foot. I've heard everything as far as it's a growth in the foot, to some sort of calcification, to a severe bunion being reduced by just simply manipulation. A lot of these, unfortunately, are not true. So I'm here to speak to you as a functional podiatrist about the biomechanics of a bunion. I want to start by showing you two pictures of bunions. So we have a severe bunion here, and this is what would be called a mild bunion. Now, whenever we're looking at a bunion, you do not want to just look at the size of the bump. And I'm actually going to show you in a moment what that bump really is. It's not a growth. It is your body's own bone that has shifted. We're going to see that you do not want to look at a bunion just around the big toe and kind of that abduction that's associated with a bunion. Here, the more mild one has less of a bump, so we'll see that there's less pathology, and if there were to be a bunion that is corrected through functional exercise, orthotics, stretching, etc., it would surely be this one. So now I want you to look at this x-ray. This x-ray is pretty much the equivalent of what this foot x-ray would look like. What we can see here, and what I want you to focus on, again, is not the big toe joint. So do not focus here and that abduction of the great toe. What I want you to look at is down here. This is what we want to look at when it comes to bunions. This is referred to as your metatarsal cuneiform joint, which is also known as your first ray. For anyone who's taken any of the advanced BTS programming, we focus a lot on the first ray and we talk about the biomechanics of bunions. So what a bunion is, is it's actually a deformity or a shift within this metatarsal cuneiform joint. When you have a lack of stability in this joint or hypermobility in this joint, what happens is that your first metatarsal is able to swing out towards the midline of your body. That shifting of the entire metatarsal bone is what creates or what kind of establishes that bump on the side of the foot. So really, the bump in the bunion here that you're seeing is your first metatarsal head. And that angulation of the first metatarsal is coming all the way down to about here at your metatarsal cuneiform joint. The severity of bunions is gauged based on what's called your intermetatarsal angle, which means the angle from the first to the second metatarsal. Now, to truly correct a bunion, you must correct where the deformity is, which means it's in that met cuneiform joint or your first ray. If you simply address this type of bunion or this severe of a bunion here at the abduction of the great toe or at the first MPJ, one, you will not get true correction of your bunion, or if it's from a surgical perspective, this is when your bunions return. So if you've ever heard so-and-so had bunion surgery, 10 years later their bunion returned, that meant that the appropriate procedure was not done and they probably had something done here versus down here at the met cuneiform joint. Now this type of bunion, which again would present like this, is typically associated with a flat foot or with somebody who's overpronated, has a loss of medial column stability, or has, has hypermobility within their ligaments. Okay, this one, 100%, hands down, must be corrected through surgery. You cannot reverse a bunion that looks like this or like this through splinting and strengthening. You may get a decrease in the symptoms or you may be able to push pause on the progression of the bunion. However, there is no way that you can get rid of that bump and this angulation of the metatarsal and metcuniform joint through exercise and correctives. Now, the bunion that you could possibly address would be this one. This is considered a mild bunion. This is one that you would be able to splint, kind of 
80 duck that digit towards the midline of the body using something like a bunion booty which is often what I recommend doing short foot exercise taping strapping strengthening the foot through short foot exercise strengthening the glutes all of those can be done to try to get a little bit of more realignment of that great toe bunion here can be addressed through corrective exercise. This one you may be able to see a decrease in the angulation of that hallux in relation to the first MPJ. You will still always, always have that bump. So please remember that you cannot get rid of that bump without surgery. The abduction of the gray toe could be addressed, again, more so in this one, not so much in this one. So if you have a client or a patient who happens to have a mild bunion and they're doing different splinting techniques such as here with the bunion booty, you can see that it realigns the hallux in relation to the first MPJ, but again, the bump is still there, the bump is still there. So patient client who is not interested in surgery and they happen to have a severe bunion, you must explain to them the biomechanics of a bunion start to build stability in the foot so again we can push pause on the progression of the bunion but again there is no growth within the foot understanding which bunions actually need to be corrected by surgery and also understanding where correctives play a role and how you can use barefoot training to keep your clients and patients barefoot strong i hope you enjoyed to learn more about your foot foot biomechanics and barefoot training please visit ebfafitness.com